You know what? Believe it or not, adversity is a necessary part of life. You know why that is true? Well, it is impossible to climb a mountain with smooth sides. It's the jagged edges and it's the roughness of the mountain that creates footing that you need to climb higher. Hey, I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and you're watching The Midweek Refill. In this episode of The Midweek Refill, we're sharing part two of a series on the book of Esther entitled, For Such a Time as This. This week, we'll talk about courage in times of adversity. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our series entitled For Such a Time as This, based on the Old Testament book of Esther. Now, in last week's episode, we worked our way through Esther chapter one and chapter number two. In Esther chapter one, it begins by painting a picture of the vast empire of King Xerxes, who was the host of an extravagant banquet showing his wealth and his power to all of the nobles and the officials for an astonishing 180 days. Now, that was a party to be had. Well, following the prolonged display of this party that Xerxes had, he throws a separate seven-day event that was open to all of the citadel of Susa. And during those festivities, Queen Vashti, who was his wife at the time, host her own banquet for the women. As time progressed on, tension began to rise between King Xerxes and Queen Vashti because he demands that she leaves her party and comes and displays her beauty. And I think it's safe to make some assumptions here that he didn't quite mean in the most queenly of ways. He wanted her to come and basically put on a show, if you will, for his guest and show off her beauty as a display to all of the, shall we say, men there. Well, when Queen Vashti refused to obey the king's command, it incites his fury. In Esther chapter number two, we witness the unfolding of a divine plan amidst the corridors of power. Because after this tumultuous event in chapter number one, King Xerxes finds himself now in search of a new queen because he has vacated the role of queen in the kingdom because Vashti refused to come and dance before all of the people. So when he let Vashti go, he now begins a new search for a new queen. Can you just imagine the anticipation as the king's servants begin to embark on a quest to find the most beautiful maiden from every corner of the kingdom? And among these maidens was Esther, who was a Jewish orphan that was raised by her cousin Mordecai. Well, little did she know that she was in fact destined for greatness. Esther, guided by her unwavering faith, inner beauty, now captures the king's heart, and she's crowned as the new queen of Persia. She didn't see that coming. And it's a testament to God's providence because God has a way of orchestrating events in our lives to fulfill his divine destiny purposes for our lives. In the midst of Esther's newfound royalty, Mordecai uncovers a plot to assassinate the king. Through Esther's intervention, the plot is foiled, and Mordecai's loyalty is recorded forever in the king's chronicles. And it's just a reminder to us that we need to make sure that we make things happen for other people, because God will always allow what you do for someone else to come back big and strong in your own life. You know, Galatians 
tells us, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So as we reflect on Esther chapter 2, let's be reminded of God's faithfulness in our own lives. Because just as he elevated Esther from obscurity to royalty, believe me when I tell you, God's got a plan to elevate each one of us to new levels of influence and purpose. So let's just trust in God's timing and his perfect plan for our lives, knowing that he has destined all of us for greatness as well. Well, through Esther's journey, May we find inspiration to walk in faith and obedience, trusting that God's blessings are abundant even in our own life. Well, this week we move to lesson two, and we're talking about courage in times of adversity. Now, courage is frequently linked with grand displays of bravery. Yet in truth, it's gentle whispers of unwavering resolve and resilience that paint the true portrait of courage. So today, let's embark on a journey to uncover the very essence of courage amidst life's trials and tribulations, discovering how our steadfastness intertwines beautifully with our faithfulness, enabling us to stand unshaken against the storms that may come our way. Friends, let me tell you about the divine gift of courage, a virtue that reveals its true brilliance when faced with fires of adversity. It's not merely about confronting peril or trouble in our lives or embracing uncertainty. It's all about clutching on to hope and unyielding faith, even when the odds seem as if they're stacked against us. You see, because in life's grand story, courage emerges as the golden thread that intricately binds the tales of ordinary souls who discover extraordinary strength to overcome life's greatest trials. Take a moment and reflect on a time in your own life when you had to demonstrate courage in difficult circumstances. It could be a personal hardship, a professional challenge, the loss of a loved one, or even a moment that tested your very values and beliefs. How did you find the courage to face that situation? What sustained you in the midst of your adversity? Esther's courageous decision to approach the king is well worth talking about. When faced with perilous situations of approaching the king uninvited, Esther displayed remarkable courage and faithfulness. Let's look at Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. The Living Bible translation reads like this. Then Esther sent the message to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Shushan and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days night or day, and I and my maids will do the same. And then, though it is strictly forbidden, I will go in to see the king. And if I perish, I perish. Family, let's delve into the richness of Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 this week, where Mordecai extends a powerful challenge to Esther urging her to recognize the divine orchestration of royal placement. For such a time as this, and this verse isn't merely a string of words, it is literally a divine revelation. It encapsulates the profound interplay between destiny, courage, and the unfolding of God's grand design. Consider this. Esther wasn't just a mere coincidence. She wasn't just a stroke of luck. No, Esther was placed in her regal position by the divine hand of God's providence for a purpose far greater 
than she could have ever imagined. And it's a reminder to each and every one of us that we too are placed in our circumstances, not by happenstance, but by divine appointment. Just as Esther was called to step into her destiny with courage and faith, so too are we called to embrace the moments that are set before us. For in these moments lies the unfolding of God's magnificent plan for our lives. So, my friends, let's take heed of Mordecai's words and step into our own, quote unquote, such a time as this moments with unwavering faith and courage, knowing that we are fulfilling divine purpose that is set before us. I like what Joshua 1 and 9 says. In the Living Bible Translation, we read Joshua 1 and 9, Yes, be bold and strong. Banish fear and doubt. For remember, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And what a word of promise that is. Just as Joshua 1 and 9 boldly declares, Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It resonates deeply with Esther's fearless resolve. In her daring approach to the king, Esther demonstrates the sheer courage that blooms when one's faith meets the ultimate trial. Her unwavering commitment to stand for her people, even at the risk of her own life, showcases the unbreakable bond between courage and faithfulness. These divine scriptures from Esther and Joshua intertwine beautifully, painting a narrative of courage that is rooted firmly in the acknowledgement of divine providence. They serve as poignant reminders that our moments of bravery are not solitary voyages, but are intricately woven with the hand of God guiding us through every trial that we can encounter. So, my friends, take heart, stand tall, knowing that the Lord is ever-present, empowering us to face the challenges that we face with unwavering faith, with unwavering courage. Let's explore this marvelous story of Mordecai and uncover the remarkable power of encouragement and unwavering trust in the Almighty God. Because in Esther's journey, Mordecai plays a very pivotal role, exemplifying strength that is found in leaning on God's guidance. In Esther 4 and 14, Mordecai's words ring out with clarity, urging Esther to grasp the importance of her divine purpose. And he assures her that even if she hesitates, deliverance will come. Yet, it's her chance to shine or face dire consequences. And this verse captures the essence of trusting in God's providence and bravely embracing our calling. Now, let's look at Psalm 27 and verse 14, where we're encouraged to wait for the Lord and be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. You know, friends, these verses echo the importance of placing our trust in God's timing and in God's sovereignty, especially in moments of uncertainty and fear. Mordecai's unwavering faith and encouragement to Esther reminds us of the profound impact of trusting in God's plan. When we intertwine the scriptures from both Esther and Psalms, we then uncover a narrative of steadfast assurance in divine providence. It's a reminder, friends, that our acts of courage are rooted in an unyielding trust in God's sovereignty. So let these scriptures ignite fire within you, boldly encouraging others to live out their faith as you live out yours, knowing that our trust in God's plan serves as a beacon of hope and strength in the face of adversity. So, my friends, let us stand firm in our trust, 
For in God's hands, we find unwavering guidance and steadfast assurance. Let's look at Mordecai's encouragement as we trust God. Now, Mordecai's crucial part in Esther's journey beautifully showcases the profound impact of uplifting encouragement and steadfast trust in the Almighty God. Esther 4 and 14 reads like this. If you keep quiet at a time like this, God will deliver the Jews from some other source, but you and your relatives will die. What's more, who can say but that God has brought you into the palace for just a time as this? Now, in Esther 4 and 14, Mordecai shares a powerful message with Esther, reminding her that her voice matters in a time of trouble. And he assures her that if she hesitates, help will come from elsewhere. But her own destiny and that of her family would hang in the balance. And this verse truly emphasizes the deep significance of relying on God's guidance and bravely stepping into purpose. He has ordained for every one of our lives. Psalm 27 and verse 14 is very powerful. It says, don't be impatient. Wait for the Lord and he will come and save you. Be brave, stout-hearted, and courageous. Yes, wait, and he will help you. Now, in the same vein, Psalm 27, 14 echoes a similar message, urging us to patiently wait for the Lord, to be strong and courageous, and to place our faith in him. And both of these scripture passages resonate deeply with the idea of trusting in God's timing, his providence, and even when we find ourselves in times of uncertainty and in fear. Mordecai's steadfast faith and encouragement to Esther serves as a shining example of profound impact that comes from placing our trust in God's divine plan. And when we weave them together, the teachings from Esther and from Psalms, we uncover a narrative of unwavering confidence in God's providence. It's a gentle reminder that our acts of courage are rooted in an unshakable trust in God's sovereignty. So let these scriptures inspire you to boldly have courage as you encourage others in their faith journeys, knowing that our unwavering trust in God's plan serves as a beacon of hope and strength amidst life's challenge. Well, Let's talk about cultivating a spirit of courage and faithfulness. Now, as we bring this lesson to a close, it's vital to take a moment for introspection and really consider how we can actively cultivate a spirit of courage and faithfulness in our own lives. You see, this timeless story of Esther and the unwavering faith of Mordecai serve as a powerful example of the transformative impact of courage and trust in God's providence. From their remarkable journeys, you and I can draw invaluable lessons on how to nurture these virtues within ourselves. Courage and faithfulness aren't just lofty ideals. They're tangible qualities that you and I can develop through deliberate actions, and attitudes. Embracing courage means stepping beyond our comfort zones, standing firm in the face of uncertainty, and leaning on God's guidance, even when the road ahead seems daunting. And similarly, faithfulness requires us to remain unwavering in our beliefs, to persist through the challenges, to hold fast to our convictions, even amidst adversity. So, My friends, let's take these lessons to heart and embark on a journey of cultivating courage and faithfulness, knowing that God's help can overcome any obstacle that life can ever bring in our path. Man, this is just chock full of wonderful, wonderful lessons from this powerful 
Little Book of Esther. I can't wait to share with you in next week's episode. But I do want to remind you that right down there in the description box is a free PDF handout. It's lengthy. It is full. It is rich. It has questions that you can take a deeper dive into the scriptures as you apply the book of Esther to your life for such a time as this. I want you to make sure you access it. Go down and click the link in the description and download the material. You can also send it to somebody, email it to somebody, share it with somebody, discuss it over the phone with somebody, jump on a Zoom call with somebody and continue to study God's word together as we share God's word with you. Please do me a favor. If this is your first time here, please say hello to us. We're so thankful that you tuned in to this week's episode of of the Midweek Refill. And by all means, consider hitting that like button, the share button, subscribe button, and the bell notification. So every time new content is loaded, you'll be among the first to know. Well, this is Bishop Littman. You've been watching the Midweek Refill. I love you. God loves you. And there is greater in store for you because you've been called to serve God and his people for such a time as this. Until next time, you go with God. Thank you.